getting ready to start the back of the framing. Uh, I did make a small goof up earlier. Normally, when I'm making these pieces that go on here, I also make the back half at the same time. Uh, so this way, because they got to be the same size uh, for it to look symmetrical. Um, so I kind of goofed up there. Normally, I'll do that before I put all this stuff on so I can still lay it nice and flat like it was. But I kind of I kind of skipped that step. So luckily I have this table right here so I can lay it on here so I, I ain't gonna worry about this being on the table and damaging it. So I'm just gonna get all my um, my pieces cut real fast and I'll get ready to screw them together and I'll, I'll start showing how I make the back half. Okay, here's the not so fun part. Now I have this arranged in the same configuration as the prop. Now sometimes I'll take the time to drill a hole and you know, screw them together, or sometimes I'll just take a block and I'll, I'll shoot it down with a, a small staple. I just you know, have one of these, just a simple, uh, it's a combination of brad dealer slash stapler from hard freight, they're pretty cheap. I have a, I think I'm running probably like a half inch staple. And just, and one thing I like to do, just because it, it kind of helps bond things together, All right, now that's all together. I don't worry about the ends hanging off because I'm just gonna take a saw. I'm just gonna cut those off flush. And once I cut those off, then I'll start doing the next part. All right, now for the next part, what I do is I take a, a two by four and I just cut them into essentially these little 45 degree wedges. What I do is uh, obviously on the side that's attached to the thing, you have to go from the top side. So I just pre-drill, screw it down, you know, like everything else, I put a little caulking underneath of them just so when the caulking dries, just that extra, you know, barrier just to kind of help bond everything together. And then what I do is uh, I've already measured this out. Like I said, I want mine to be two foot deep. So it's gonna be from, from this point back is, is two feet. So I've already measured from here to here and I need 18 and a half to create my so I, I cut these pieces right here. They're gonna go on next right here. I'm gonna screw them right through the side. And then after I get these on, then I'll take more of my little 45 degree wedges. Those will get screwed to these. And then that piece right there will sit directly right on top of it, of a screws in that. And then that'll anchor the entire thing together. And then I'll do my, uh, my house wrap after that. And that's what I use for the sides. So it still keeps it lightweight and helps keep costs down. Okay, I'm at this stage. I don't really feel like you know making the part where I'm screwing it together. I mean, we've all seen people screw wood together, but uh, see where I just put the the things in the corner. I have a screw on this side, and then I did one screw up here, and then I did a screw down here at an angle. I sort of split that one a little bit, but it's still holding. Same here. I got these screws, and I got these screws, and what this does, you can see, it just it makes the thing nice and nice and rigid because these these right here are going to kind of hold it kind of square in each one of the corners so it kind of locks the entire thing together and i put a brace in the middle and then i got the three on the top the next step is to do the essentially the roof and the wrap part i'm going to show you what i use for that now what i use for my size and all that is this house wrap i found and i kind of like it because it does have kind of like a block work kind of look on it um but the problem with that like on some of the other props that had to do is you have to do it sideways obviously so it has to go this way so since this prop is you know to my size is about four feet but i have to have an overlap it's probably going to go from the bottom and stop at a certain point right here and I have to overlap it again but i'm kind of going with the you know like the smooth look on this so i'm literally just going to take this and just go literally 
right over the top and right down the other side, staple it uh, onto the thing. I'm gonna let it come all the way out to this point here. I'm gonna put a little bit of caulk right here so this way I can hide this edge so it cleans all this up. And then once, once that's all dry, then I'll be ready to uh, paint the prop. And at that point, it will pretty much be about complete. Okay, um, at this point right here, you see where I just took that house wrap, I just wrapped it completely around the whole thing, stapled it on. I'm gonna I'm gonna put more staples on it right now. I just you know, just got it. You know, mainly just the corners. Now, what I did with mine last year to help keep like the uh, wind and rain from knocking them over is I took some little eye eye bolts. You know, I just screwed them into these upper ones right here. I got one of those uh, little augers that you see for dog leashes. I just ran it in the ground right in the middle and I just took some of that nylon string and just made like a V where I tied it to the loop, went down here and came back up, tied it nice and tight. And that actually kept it where even when we had some pretty good wind storms, I didn't have to worry about them blowing over. And then, uh, you know, this is a, this house wrap is you know, meant for, you know, to help keep water off, you know, the wood framing of a house before they do the siding. So it'll help keep the inside of that dry. So say like you made one where, say this front was open right here and you had a prop in there, it'll help keep your prop dry. You know, and if you take some more of that house wrap, you can always make a, you know, a flap for the back where you can just make a piece that, you know, goes on here. So after you put all your stuff in there, you just finish stapling it on there and it'll actually help keep your props dry, you know, from getting wet or damaged during rainstorms during, during your display, depending on how long you run your display. So um, right now I just gotta let all the caulking dry, put a few more uh, staples in it, and then I'll be uh, ready to start doing the painting portion. All right, I'm pretty much ready for paint. Now what I did on the top here is even though I wrapped the house wrap all the way around, I like my roofs to look a lot more solid, not just this. You know, this is fine for the side, but I like my tops to look a little more solid. So you can see I added some extra to the top and I went ahead and even though I wasn't going to, I went ahead and did the little detail just to kind of show you, you know, just adding those little bevel strips, how it really kind of changes the look. You know, it gives it like a nice little profile, kind of almost like a, like a crown or like a cove, you know, style around the, uh, you know, the top sections here. I also did it on this part right here. So it kind of softens it up as it reaches the brick and all that. So I'm pretty much at the point now where I'm ready for paint. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get it ready for the painting. Um, number one, if you're uh, spraying uh, any styrofoams, unless you have already put like a dry lock on there, or you have something already that's already on there that's protecting the styrofoam, you can't use aerosol cans. The thinners that are in aerosol cans will melt your styrofoam and it'll, it'll mess up your finish. Now, I mean, depending on the finish you're looking for. Um, so you always wanna use regular latex house paints. It can be indoor, outdoor, that doesn't really matter. Uh, what I use to paint mine is I use these uh, you know cheap spray guns. You get them right over Harbor Freight. Uh, the reason I like them is you can uh, spray these with a pancake com uh, air compressor. You can paint them with a large air compressor. It doesn't matter. The other thing I like about them is you can actually you know you can feather the, your trigger, so you'll hear the air coming out, but you can minimize the amount of actual material that's coming out. So when you're doing like your uh, areas where you're gonna make like where it looks like water has ran down the face of it and it's just gonna be just a thin little black line or you know whatever it's gonna be. You know, you can actually do that with these guns by just feathering it out. If you need a little more paint, you just squeeze a little further. Uh, so I do like these. So, but the one thing you definitely always gotta do is whenever you're doing any paint, always put a strainer, run your paint through a strainer. You know, it's a little cuppy stick in there. Uh, just cause you know, the holes in these things are very small. And if you have like an old paint can, say, a paint can from last season, you know, and it, you know, you get like a little hard spot in there. If you just put a strain in there without doing a strainer and that hard piece gets down inside here into the section of the gun, it'll plug that hole up, doesn't spray. Now you gotta empty the paint out of it, clean it, tear it all apart, get that junk out of there and you just gotta start all over. So just to save yourself the aggravation, always use, always use a strainer, you know, before you put your paint in these guns. Now on the paint, just regular old house paint, uh, obviously you don't want to take the paint directly from your can 
straight to your gun because it's really thick. It'll still spray, but it just doesn't spray as nice. So I usually just take some water, I'll pour some water into the thing, and then just mix it up. Yeah, you don't want it, you don't want it like water, but you definitely want it to where, you know, it just seems a little runny. That's what'll allow it to spray better. So let me finish getting this stirred up. I'll get it in the gun and we'll go ahead and start getting our first layer of paint on. Okay, I'm gonna put the first coat of gray paint on it and then I'm gonna show you how I do my, my stone look. My stoning is um, a lot of people use the dry lock, but that gets pretty expensive when you're building a lot of props. If you're only building one, it's great, but like if I'm building multiples, what I do is I'll either take like a mortar mix for tile or like the grout for tile, and I get the uh, prop nice and wet, like you see, like it's really wet, it's actually running in a few spots, which is fine because when I throw the stuff on there, that's just going to add more character to it. And I just literally just throw the stuff on it. And then when it dries, it gives it a nice stone feel to it. And then I put another coat of gray on it to seal that. And I can do my other colors. from my air compressor to blow off any of the excess uh, you know try not to get it you know blow too much off and then there'll be a second coat of the paint on it all right I'm gonna put my second coat of gray on there Now you'll notice that when I painted it, you know, I painted the whole thing with the gray. The reason I do that is because, you know, on normal brick, you know, inside the joints, you have your mortar and your mortar is usually a gray color anyways. So to sit there and paint all the brick first and then try to paint all your lines after the fact is a lot harder than if you just paint everything first. Now you can paint it with two edges and use a brush or you can use a roller. You just roll it because really all you're doing is painting just the high the high points uh, but i kind of like to use a brush because it allows areas like in between like these little divots and stuff like that to maybe keep a little bit of like just a gray color you know and now most you know a lot of bricks some have you know, a lot of inconsistency especially the old bricks some of them were very you know very consistent in their color some of them might have had you know, little inconsistencies in the color depending on how they were done. So I like to use just a regular brush and just kind of just go right over the top of them. The biggest thing is try not to get too much paint on your brush at one time so you don't get any 
that wants to get in the groove. You can, if you get some in the groove, don't sweat it too much. What little bit you're gonna get in there is not gonna like make a huge deal. Now that we're past the two boring parts of this, now this is the part where you you start to use your artistry, you know, your creativity in creating the uh, the look of aging, weathering, that kind of stuff. I start off with black, then I use greens, and then I use browns. Now, one thing I was talking about was, you know, I got feather my uh, trigger. I want to make like a water run right here. I'm going to go my press a little bit. Now, I like to, when I'm doing this, I like to think about areas where water is going to collect or sit. And that's where I tend to put a lot of my greens or areas where water would say have splashed up. Because, um, you know, concrete is poor, so it tends to hold the moisture in those areas. And that's where I do a lot of my greens.
trick that I do is sometimes I'll turn my pressure way, way down. So when I'm actually, and then I open my fan up and when I'm spraying it, it won't atomize as much and it almost kind of like spits the uh, paint out, which gives you like little areas of like, maybe like little concentrated spots. After I do a little bit, I'll, I'll get a close up and show you what I mean. where you can see like uh like kind of up above here see the uh there's like dots you know instead of it being just like a nice paint there's it's it gives it areas of more of a concentrated you know, get a little more there we go see where it's uh shows a like a heavy concentration right on the edges there that's a little thing i do to kind of give certain areas a little more like those areas have a lot more uh, water or dew or condensation that builds up in those particular areas. All right, the last part is the brown. The brown is what kind of gives it the look of like where, like the dirt, you know, and you know, maybe pollen and stuff like that might have collected. And it get, you know, like if you look at something that's old, it always has like a rusty, dirty kind of thing on certain edges. Now I'm out of brown in my regular latex paint, but since I have so much paint on this already now, that using a spray can is not gonna hurt it because all the foam is now protected. So I'm gonna end up using a spray can. I'm just gonna use just a, um, a Rust-Oleum, just a, like a brown primer, which looks pretty good for this. you got a little too heavy in certain areas you could always get yourself like I said now that everything's protected you can always get yourself a can of you know green and a can of black you know for like areas where I think I got a little too straight away here you just lighten it up a little bit I'm going to consider this to be done. Now that last portion of the video with the painting and the aging, there's no real right or wrong way to do that portion. Uh, it's more or less entirely up to what's going to look best for you, what what you're going for, what your actual uh, theme is for your display. If it's you know an old style cemetery or a much newer style cemetery, so that's that's you know it's entirely what's going to look best to you on how you're going to want to do your painting. I like to make everything look a little more on the old rustic side, you know, so I kind of go tend to go this route more. And don't be afraid to put paint on these things because you're not really putting like a large, heavy, you know, thing of paint on these things. You're more or less doing a lot of misting and stuff like that. So even though it looks heavy right now, it will fade and it, it'll still look good after it sits out in the sun for a week. So don't be afraid to put paint on these things. But the reason for this video was to kind of show what 
you could make and what you can make out of very easily to get a hold of items from like your, your local hardware stores to Walmart's dollar stores and stuff like that and that it's actually a very easy process to build you can take one of these and a couple of nights after work build a structure and then one day on a sunny day get it all painted so this is not something that takes a long time to build and it's very easy to build and it's very inexpensive i the way i build mine i've tried to find the most inexpensive way to build stuff like this as possible because a lot of times i'm building a large quantity of them i'm usually a lot of times building four or more of these things so you know I, I try to keep the cost down as much as possible so that's why i wanted to share this video you know hopefully the information in this video you know gives you the confidence to take on a project like this and to build something really cool and really unique for your next halloween display if you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit that like button subscribe hit the notification button so you get notified on the next video drop me a comment tell me what you think of this one uh, if you have any requests something that you might want me to try to build uh, to show how I make them I'll try to make a video of that and I, once again I'd like to thank all my subscribers and everybody that watches my videos and thank you for watching and happy haunting